Okay, so the next, uh, the next question I have been asked is um, dealing with um, a difficult friend and feeling unsafe, uh, how to deal with an angry person and um, fiery personalities. Well, you know, this is something that um, I can identify with this question. I think as, um, you know, there, um, even myself, you know, my mother's quite a fiery person and there was this um, attraction, attraction to um, fiery people. And actually, um, so that these patterns that, that exist uh, within the ego of something that's familiar and, and seem to want, wanting to get an attraction with that um, again and again and again. And then obviously dealing with the downside of people who are fiery, uh, which is um, usually fiery people are nice when they're getting what they want, but if they don't get what they want, they tend to be extremely fiery and explosive and have a lot of passive aggressive anger because uh, one is not, uh, they, tend to, they tend to like the polar opposite in the person, so you know they tend to like if they're angry, they need to vent their anger. So with with this type of thing again, um, using things like cancelling. Again, one has to ask a question with a fire. You know, it's like you've got a friend, and when things are going their way, the friendship's really, really good. And as soon as things don't go their way, they get very aggressive and angry and fiery because they're not getting what they want. So that's quite a habitual, that can be a pattern. So it's like, well, you know, things are nice for two weeks, you don't do something they want, and then suddenly all, all hell breaks loose. And um, if that's a cyclic pattern, the, the, again, each case is a context-by-context context situation. So. Um, but it's, it's to ask, you know, my, my thing would be like, well, I've obviously got something in myself which has attracted this individual into my life. And obviously I'm getting a lot of payoff from when times are going good. But I'm obviously uh, getting very, very hooked into the triggers when things are going bad, you know. So let's say... Um, yeah, so it's like, often with fiery people, they could be very demanding. When they want something, they want something, they want it now. And if they don't get it now, they get very, very angry and they let you know about it. Or they give you their, their version of punishment. So the thing I would say is, right, obviously, I have something out in my belief systems and my vibration, which has attracted that energy vibration into... Uh, into my field because maybe I was programmed by parents or by society um, that seems to be a comforting personality which I'm unconsciously attracted to or I, uh, or I might even consciously think I can get some kind of gain maybe they're powerful, maybe they can teach me something or maybe because I haven't got that well I think anger can be confused with confidence but uh, it seems to be a quality that I admire. So I'm, I'm in with that person to try and hope that it rubs off on me. But then these are all the, the various payoffs. Um, and often I, I found with people there can be, with these situations where you put up with someone who, uh, in a period, every period, period they do something that really, really disconnects you, but you put up with it over and over again, is because of um, the payoffs, uh, you know, the payoffs and the fear of fear of uh, working through. But my thing is, you know, if if I'm doing that, it's because well, a few things. I, I I've attracted that person into my life. I have belief systems that have allowed that in. Also, um, I've made them important. Um, I've made them special. I've made them a god in my life. Um, and then anything that I make important or make a god in my life or project a lot of meaning and value or importance on, or even worse, my survival, 
or my need for love onto project these are all projections because the true source the true source of uh, protection and, and security and love is is is, is God you see and uh, a lot of people may find that hard to believe but actually um, the more you connect to that source the more you start to realize that the infinite source is the true provider um, not to say that others don't love you but actually the more you let go the more you find out that is the true power that looks after you and provides for the miraculous to, to unfold and actually the highest levels of spiritual connection show the absolute miraculous uh, we won't go into the cities and, and the, the enormous power of the saints uh, who have absolutely connected to the, to the eternal presence within and the power that they hold, which is beyond this victimhood stance, which is typical to the ego, which is normal and human, to make everything in the external world one's God, except and, and not let that go so that one can't let the light in. So, now... Now, if it was me, uh, and if I was having, a, uh, let's say I have this friend, but every so often, if I don't do something they like, uh, they, they, they erupt in anger and they sort of mete out this punishment to me, then I would actually, I'd want to be free, not necessarily like cut them off, but I'd want to be free of one of the triggers in me. How have I made them my higher power? How have I made them God? How is my ego projecting survival or the need for love? or wanting something from them uh, and make all of this meaningless. Uh, I would totally um, de-hire power them 100% so that they can't, cannot say or do and there's nothing I want from them. Now that the state of the enlightened teachers, every enlightened teacher that, I, that I've studied or met have always said the same thing. There's nothing they need or want from anybody or anything because they're in that state of absolute presence, stillness, the state of, of everything really, the allness of love and now. So they all say the same thing and in those states, everyone who's been in those states, if, if you ask anyone in those states, do you need anything to feel more complete? Everybody would always say, no, there's nothing else I need. You don't need to give me a donut, an extra 50 pounds, no, nothing else is required in that state of, of infinite presence. So, when the ego starts getting hooked into stuff, then these states of like getting hooked into the world and projecting meaning and value or godlike status or special status onto things. So, you know, with, um, with, um, with an angry, you know, like that, that person's anger is meaningless to me. You know, it's just as meaningless as, as the light bulb. Is just as meaningless as the lampshade. Is just as meaningless as the as the floor. You know. So, as you keep doing this, that person's facial expressions. You know, they have this look of like disappointment or anger or fury on their face because you didn't do something. Well, that facial expression is as meaningless as the light bulb. I cancel my belief in being able to be hooked into this person's facial expression. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief in being hooked into or being a victim of um, this person's anger. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel, I cancel my need for this person to teach me confidence. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. This, this person this person's, uh, um, this person's achievements are meaningless. They're as meaningless as the table. Or I cancel my belief that because of this person's uh, achievements that they're important. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. So through this, now if there's like a traumatic action and there's a, 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 um, like an overwhelm of feelings that are going on, then also spending time allowing yourself to just sit with the feelings. I, I'll try and describe it. It's like allowing the feelings. It's like trying not to go... Remember, when there's a lot of emotions that are being experienced, 
the more you identify with thoughts and get lost in the thoughts, that's resisting your feelings. So if there's a lot of feelings and one is spending all the time lost in thought, that is a resistance to allowing the feelings to escape and to be processed through. So it's like you just start the process, like if you're going into a story, cut, cut the thoughts and go back to just allowing the feelings and you can just process through those, those emotions. But like I've, I've, uh, I've dealt with a lot of people, I've had a lot of years of experience and it's like when the energetic attachment is released, a miracle will happen, you know. And here's one of the things with, um, with the ego, is that it, it projects like survival onto a, onto a certain relationship and is unwilling to completely surrender the inner attachment to that, um, to that person. And here's the thing. Um, I would say this, and you don't have to do it, not all of this is, op is optional, all of this is optional, is that um, um, if you're willing to completely surrender it, a miracle will happen, which is that either the relationship will transform and it will blossom on into, a new, into a new level, or it will leave, which is something the ego is afraid of, and something far better will replace it. Because you're now at a vibration, either that person moves up to your vibration, and there's a miracle between the two of you, and there's a new re relationship, a holy relationship, whereby that, that pattern has been dislodged from the relationship. It's like you've cleared that energy blockage between the two of you, and now it's sustainable. But they also have an option to keep that pattern within themselves. And if you totally clear it, what will happen is that it will be untenable. Intuitively, you'll know you no longer need that. And because you've let go of the, the God status that's been projected, then that will be an easy thing to let them go. And they, they will attract relationships in alignment with their vibration. And now you'll be open to a higher vibration. And um, I, will share, I will share this thing of, um, you know, it's... Everyone, and most spiritual speakers, this is quite common knowledge, if you completely let go of a person, so you no longer have any energetic attachment to them, a miracle of some sort will is, is guaranteed to happen. And um, I've shared this story many times, it's in my book, Bulletproof Peace. I've, I've plugged my book, I thought I might plug my book every now and then, which is available on Amazon. And, um, and um, the story I wrote in the book, there was this person I had in a spiritual group that I had a, a, a grievance or a resentment to because I used the word God a lot and she was a staunch atheist and gave her view. And so I had to pray for her and use the course and cancel my beliefs and feel the emotion, you know, that someone, I felt someone was trying to control me to stop me from using the languaging that I wanted to use. And the day I felt that the, totally like at peace with her, you know, almost like, I don't know if I felt absolute love for her, but I felt absolute peace. There was no animosity or hook into her. And she came up to me and said, Sabi, you've taught me a spiritual lesson. I just need to let you know I'm leaving the country. <clears throat> so, I mean, I just want to say, and I intuitively got it. It's like my vibration, I transcended my vibration, which brought that conflict into my life. And I was being triggered by that. And it was like, when you, when you transcend the vibration that is hooking you in, and how do you know you're hooking into something? It's because you're hooking into it. So that tells you that it's not... The hooks out there in the world are not to blame. It's the things inside of you which hook into them, which is the problem. There, I mean, there's no such thing as angry people out there. There's no such people, thing as bad people. There's no such thing as axe murderers. And what I mean by that is there's nothing out there that can hook you in or make you a victim of it, you know. So <clears throat> when in ego one wants to change the world, like let's, let's um, get all the horrible people and ship them to another country across the world. <laughs> I think they, they tried to do that once a long time ago in this country. But that's not, that's not the way to do it spiritually. The way is to let go of the hooks within oneself. So I do... So, so I haven't said like you necessarily cut them off, but I do the spiritual work. When, you, um, when you've done enough spiritual work, but quite literally, I know that some people might um, find this a bit uh, 
um, Chancho book is really like <clears throat> not, 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 nothing. You know, like all all the all the people in this room, you know, my my goal is they're as meaningful as this table. Yeah. And my my <clears throat> my mother and my father is as meaningless as this table. Well, I, I say that in the sense that I say it so that you can get my meaning, is that I don't want my ego projections to block my presence. I want there's a natural spiritual presence which is intuit has intuitive wisdom and knows what to do in every moment and is spontaneous and it actually is of infinite love infinite presence it's actually a state of just continuous love and continuous wholeness and continual continuous grace and miracles if you hold on to any projection that something is more important than another thing then that hooks you into duality, into ego, and then into loss, and then fear of loss. Like if, if, if someone in this room was really, really important to me, then my ego would make up a story they're going to leave after a period of time. And then if it was really, really strong, then there'd be like a grief reaction or, or um, a trauma reaction, like the source of my love. So in truth, Love is present, infinite love, infinite power, infinite presence, infinite stillness, il infinite oneness. It, it, the core, the existence of truth is here in every moment, but it's obscured. And the amount to which it's obscured is the level of ego identification, which hooks you into um, different vibrations. Um, I'll actually, um, yeah, I think that's, that's, um, that's what I'd say. So I'd just go to town on just releasing all of those, um, all of those hooks. I mean, it's up to you. No one has to let go of anything, but you can do the internal. It really more the question is not to cut them off necessarily, but is one willing to 100% work on one's internal hooks to the situation? And, um, you know, my, my relationship with my mother transformed when I was no longer being able to be hooked by her emotional states or her languaging. I was willing to make it totally meaningless. And then when I, when I reacted to it, I found that eventually she stopped doing the things that I was triggered by. So it's, it's the most miraculous thing. <clears throat> so it's almost like the universe will keep poking you in your, in, in your spot. So it will give you the next relationship with the same pattern over and over again until you transcend it on the inside. And then actually you, you don't actually notice the people who still do it. You see, you become you become immune to it. So <clears throat> I've never I've never regretted uh, letting go of my attachments and my meaning because actually for me it means there'll be more love and more presence. Me getting hooked into and traumatized by and having my story go is actually not a blessing to them or to me. That's why I'm quite happy to surrender, like making anyone my god. You know, because then I'll be if it's God's will, I'll be able to be more of use to them by not being hooked into and traumatized and, and going. <clears throat> so um, if my parents are about to leave the planet, I don't want to be like crying and not be able to get there. I want to be in full presence and full love and being sh sharing the highest wisdom I can in that moment. That's why even though the ego has defended its stories and poor me and this is terrible and whatever um, is, um, uh, as I sort of see it, it is in the highest good of all to let go of all illusions and all belief systems that hook me in. And, you know, <clears throat> the great thing with um, friendships is that, you know, the fear of loss. But I would say, you know, um, in letting go of the hooks to a friendship, which is seemingly difficult, for me, either in 100% letting go, it'll either transform or it'll be released, but then something better will come. So it, it, it's worth it. <clears throat>